Oh. All right, today we're gonna try something easy. It's Friday and uh, I want something easy. This is a uh, Power Gear float switch. Power Gear leveling jacks on an RV. Uh, a lot of Power Gear systems, they don't actually have a uh, jack down warning switch for each jack to let you know if the jack's stored or not. All they have is a float switch that goes in the reservoir. So when the pump pumps fluid out to the jacks, the level in the reservoir would go down and the uh, warning light would go off. So it's also a low fluid warning light. <laughs> So here we are, we'll take a look at it. It's a relatively simple switch. It's just a magnetic reed switch. So it just mounts in a vertical tank. If this was a horizontal tank, it would be like this and have like a, a blue donut that would slide up and down as a blue float. So this one mounts in the tank and the fluid goes up. A little magnetic reed switch in there. Well, magnet in here. Uh, what's it gonna do? It's going to, if the fluid goes down, it uh <laughs> it closes the switch and uh allows continuity to the plug and tells the system the jacks are down so that's really it there's just a uh let me see if i can't get a better view of this you can't take it apart any further than this this is how it's going to come just take the nut off there there's a plastic washer and a grommet so this gets fed in Put the grommet in on the tank. Make sure it's uh, on there sealed all the way around. Put the washer on and then tighten it all up. And that um, puts pressure against that grommet. So what part number I have on this? It's a new item. There you go. So basically this is a Power Gear vertical tank float switch. Let's get it installed. Oh, you know what? What I will say is, like I said, it's uh, also a low fluid warning. So if you are low on fluid and you're driving around and your jack down warning light goes on and off and on and off, it's likely just because you're low on fluid. So the fluid allows this to bounce a little bit. Uh, let's see, who else uses a similar system? RVA uses a similar system, but I don't think they're really in business anymore. So, and then of course Lippard bought Power Gear, so I shouldn't say Power Gear, it's a Lippard company, but it's a Power Gear jacks, hydraulic jack system. All right, let's go get this installed. Okay, well, here it is. I think it's a 2003 Islander. Let's see. Yeah, 2003. Wait, oh. No, 2004. So it could be a five. Ooh. Uh, and there's the pump assembly. Right there's the float switch. And that's where it plugs in right here. So if you ever have one of these that just goes off incessantly, because the switch is bad, you just unplug that and then it goes away. Just don't drive away with your jacks down. So let's get this thing uh, taken out. Well, I think what I'm going to do first is check out the new switch and make sure it's working. So I just turn the key on there. Come over to the touchpad. Does its checkout. Just spin around for a little bit. I guess that's what's called the initializing. All right. So it's done. I can turn the system on. So let's go ahead and plug in that switch. So, Alright guys, forget everything I've told you so far. Uh, sometimes you misremember and sometimes I do. So if you can see right here, there's a rounded top and a pointed bottom. The instructions will actually tell you over here. That pointed bottom needs to be down. So, when there's fluid in the system, it actually opens the switch. Then when it pumps it out, it, uh, it falls down and closes the switch. So right now, the jack should 
read ah uh, that the system is let's see that the jacks are down hey look at that the jacks are down and if I go the other way with it right the jack should be up and the jacks are retracted so this switch is working so let's get this thing put on It's kind of hard to see. This is the fill port, and that's the uh, switch. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drain some of the fluid out so I don't waste all of it dribbling down. I'll just take this cap off and suction some out. Okay, let's go ahead and unscrew that. A little bit in there. Let's go down in here. This could take a while, guys. I want to uh, jump ahead. All right, I think that's enough. So get that out of the way. All right, so next thing we do is just loosen up this uh, nut. Let's see if we can't loosen it. It's plastic, so it shouldn't be under a lot of torque. But you never know. Alright, you push it in. Get the washer out of the way. Get this pulled out. There it is. I know it's always nice to see the old part, but there's nothing to look at because you've already seen this. Alright, so all we're going to do is feed this in there. push it past, let the whole sensor fall into the tank and push the grommet in, then pull the sensor back through the grommet and put the nut on. So I just also put a little bit of uh, hydraulic fluid on that grommet too. So that, uh, how do we feed it on there? Get the grommet on there, so push the sensor all the way through. It won't be able to fall in because the plug is contained with the nut. And then you're just gonna pull this thing back through, all right? Put the washer on. And you pull out on the sensor. That'll allow everything to start tightening up. And then of course we'll hold the end of the sensor right here while we tighten the nut. We'll do that next. One thing we want to do is make sure that that uh, point is going to six o'clock position and plug it in. I just have to fill it up and then we'll go test it out. That's boring to watch. It's also loud. Right, so the best way I fill these things up, because these aren't always accessible, is I'll just use a zip tie end as a dipstick and check it that way. But this one's pretty accessible. So I can look down in there and you can kind of see it's right at the bottom of the thread. So that's where I want to be. Also, you want to make sure that nut was tight. I didn't point that out, but yeah, that should be tight. But it's plastic, so you don't torque down on it really hard. So let's get this thing tested out. Right, try this again. Wait for it to get level. Put our jack down warning light is on. Oh look, the green level light is on. We should be good. That wasn't too bad. Let's go ahead and retract the jacks now. They go back up. Going back up. Well, I visually inspected it and the light went off. 
Seems about right. We did good. All right, guys. Well, that was it. Hope you enjoyed watching that. Pretty simple job. Uh, it's a pretty common problem. Uh, power gear systems just have that float switch on them. Uh, like I said, if it was a, a horizontal tank instead of a vertical tank, it would have had a, uh, a blue-looking donut that slides up and down as a float sh switch. So that's it. Thanks a lot. Close the switch. Wait, no, it opens it. That's right. So when it's um, look at this grommet's had its better day. Don't do that. That's the opposite of what I wanted to do. No, that was right. That closes it and lets it know that the uh, the jacks are uh, stored. Right. I can't do this with the phone. Is that right? I feel like... All right, let's try this again. The sensor will pull back through really easily. Oh, don't do that. All right, well, that was it. Uh, hopefully, easiest job today. Well, all right. <clears throat>